Hello everybody, Steve your Everyday Guy here. In today's video, I'm going to give you a quick little clip about my inflatable boat trailer that I made from converting a Harbor Freight trailer. I'll give you a walk around, I'll kind of show you some pictures of the building process, as well as uh, little tips and tricks I learned as I did it. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> For the base of my trailer, I used the Hallmaster 40 by 48 inch utility trailer from Harbor Freight. It has a maximum weight capacity of 1,090 pounds, which would be more than enough to handle my inflatable boat motor and gear that I put in it. I hope you're enjoying this video. Please take a moment though to like the video as well as subscribe. That way when I do have my latest videos that come out, you get notified. Before I assembled the trailer though, I did take a moment and sprayed clear coat on the entire trailer because while the trailer is painted and finished, it does not have a durable coat and will fade in the sun. So by spraying the, paint, the clear coat on it, that protects it from those UV rays. After I assembled the Harbor Freight trailer, I went ahead and I fabricated my tongue extension as well as the side brackets to support that. Here's a look at some additional reinforcing I did to the brackets as well as adding a back bracket to my trailer to make retrieval of the boat easier. So as you know by the title of the page, I took an existing Harbor Freight trailer and I modified it to be able to fit my pontoon boat. I couldn't have done that without two important resources I had. Now these are not sponsors, but since they are great companies and I got great service from them, I wanted to be sure and give them a shout out. The first one was Metal Supermarket. Um, that's who, who I was able to go to and get the metal I needed. They would cut it to the length that I specified. Uh, the other one I want to talk about is Bolt Depot. When it comes to these Harbor Freight trailers, they do have metric bolts. So all the holes is built for them. You don't want to use a, um, a standard size bolt inside them. And the reason is, is it won't fit as tightly and so you get a little bit of wiggle and you'll shear off. So you want to make sure you stick to metric bolts. And instead of having two different kinds of bolts, I wanted to make sure I had the same bolt all around the entire trailer and that was a 10 millimeter bolt. And so searching around the web, those weren't the easiest to find. The best price I got with the best shipping was actually Bolt Depot. But the downside is, is since they are such large bolts, they do weigh a lot shipping is not cheap so I recommend calculating all the bolts you're going to need first that way you're paying for just one shipping charge instead of several. As you can see um, on this trailer one thing is, is the wheels are pretty far back one of the reasons I did that is because on this trailer the axle makes the trailer ride pretty high and so I move the wheel so I have the wheels further backwards that way when I get into the water the boat will actually be submerged, whereas on a standard boat trailer that axle is a little lower, therefore you can have the wheels a little further forward. Um, you'll notice that on the bunks I've got right there, I've got a kind of unique setup. I did not try to align them so that they shape to the pontoons. What I did is I equally spaced them on the pontoons. That way each one sits on the pon at the edge of the pontoon, and you'll notice those two that go down the middle, those completely hold my transom as well as my boat floor. The picture on the left shows a view from the underside of the boat while it's sitting on the trailer. It shows how the bunks support both the pontoon as well as the floor. On the right side you get a picture on the top that shows the width of the floor in comparison to the bunks to show that that floor does in fact sit right onto those bunks. In that bottom picture you see how the transom fits on there as well. What that does is that enables if the boat's completely deflated it can support the full weight and not have to worry about any damage to the boat itself or to the transom. On the back kind of zoom in right there you can actually see what that little bracket I have there and what that is is that is to support the Atwood transom saver that I have for it which is something that does make a handle really well in addition you'll know I've got that you you'll notice I've got the u-shaped uh, bracket along with the these are actually right here those are pool noodles that I bought that I cut that happen to be just the right size to fit right over the top of that one by one I will tell you one thing about this is that as I've been using it, those are way too short. Um, one of the things I've been considering is pulling off the pool noodles and putting on PVC pipe. That way it kind of rolls around as it goes in, as well as makes it um, higher. On the back here, on these little brackets, I put those on there. That way I can use that to, for a tie down. gives a nice secure place. And then you'll notice on the wiring all around the trailer... Uh, here's just a good place where you can see it. I've taken and I've put in that protective wire around it. That keeps it protected from the UV rays. Um, right over there you can see as it runs through the entire trailer. 
all the way up. And then on this side, you can see how it just runs right along the outside. Uh, one of the things I did is you'll notice this piece of metal right there. That is approximately 13 feet long. And what that is, is that's a 2 inch by 2 inch by 3 16 inch thick. The reason I chose 3 16 inch thick is that is the thickest that my welder can handle. Um, it probably is a little bit overkill, but at the same time, with the length, that means I don't need any extra support. And it can handle the boat bouncing around on it. Right here is my winch tower. One of the things I did when I created it, is you'll notice right here I've got two bolts. What that, it's at the lowest setting. What I can do is I, if I have a boat that needs a higher one, I can actually take it out and raise it. Um, this piece of metal runs all the way down to the base to kind of show you how much extra length I can put onto that. And I've got just two little U-brackets there to hold that into place. The winch itself, I bought that from Harbor Freight. And I went ahead and I went with a nylon strap just because I felt that would be a little safer on the um, for the boat. That way I didn't have to worry about any wires or anything scratch my boat. On the front, this is where my boat bumps right up onto. And what I've done is I've just used a little angle iron right there. You can see what it looks like. And I welded that together in a T-section. And then you can see right down in there. So what I did is this is also pool noodle, and this just slides right on the top. And you can kind of see right down here at the bottom, I've got that cut, and then I've just zip tied that on the bottom to keep it so it doesn't have to worry about it coming off. You can see my boat kind of bites into a little bit, chews it up, not a big deal. If I need to, I can always replace it. Um, in terms of the bunks, that is pressure treated lumber. Always make sure you're using pressure treated. And then on the front, this one right here, you can see I've actually got that bolted in right to the front as well as back here you can see where that bolts onto there the other thing I did as I was building this trailer is up here you can see where my tongue extension secures right on to the existing Harper Freight trailer and then I went ahead and I uh, cross braced it here and here and then I've got another member there that, that strengthens it more and that goes all the way back and you'll notice when you look at the frame it's got another set of cross brace and it goes back to the back. And what that does is as I'm turning sharp torn corners, I don't have to worry about it tweaking the frame since it's basically a square bolt frame. Those triangles give it much more support. Uh, up here at the front, I've got them and I've got them bolted. You can see right here how those bolt right down there below. And like I said, that doesn't really need to give any strength for the up and down. That's more from the side to side where it braces it, so I don't have to worry about doing any damage to the trailer as I handle corners. I hope you've enjoyed watching my video and that you found it informative. If you have any questions about anything I said or any comments, please comment below. I always check those and I always respond to them. And I'll, please be sure as well to like and subscribe. That way when I release my latest videos, you will get notified.